This is Barnstable Today for Friday, April 10th. Welcome aboard. I'm Mark Mumford. And please keep in mind that the meetings we cover are available on demand at the town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. The Charter Commission continues its push towards a May 6th deadline. That's our focus today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. The Charter Commission members are reworking the draft document in the wake of two public hearings. At their latest meeting in the Growth Management Conference Room in Town Hall, the Charter Commission members received further guidance from consultant Steve McGoldrick. Some degree of detail. Certainly. I mean, <clears throat> At this stage of the process, we thought it would be helpful to kind of remind the um, commissioners of the fundamental decisions that still need to get made in order to meet their deadline, which is rapidly approaching. Um, <clears throat> and I was a little bit concerned about a couple of the, um, the um, uh, things that were discussed at the last meeting and, and voted on and whether those things had, had a chilling effect on what we thought the Commission's overall goals were in this process, and that is to, you know, uh, increase voter turnout, increase citizen participation, transparency, so forth and so on. Um, so we kind of went, took a step back and, and tried to take a look at this and, and, and make some concrete suggestions of, um, and we try to avoid making actual suggestions throughout this whole, whole process on, on fundamental decisions, but I think at this stage that we, we need to we need to get some of that stuff on the table and just get it decided because it's it's just it just gets keeps on getting revisited over and over and over again. And you know, we have to we, we don't want May six to come and all the, and everything that this commission has worked on is is, is for naught. So um, that's the purpose of, of, of this memo is to is to really kind of stimulate some discussion and, 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 and make some make some decisions. Um, so that's the overarching you know goal of this. And I can take if people have read it and, and want to ask specific questions about it. Um, um, basically, for the most part, it addresses the composition of the council and how it gets transitioned. And um, so I think that you know. Having the at large in the district mix, everybody's pretty much in agreement with that's, I think, the way people want to go. Um, the question for us is um, the staggering of those terms and how the council, you know, gets gets transitioned. What's, what's the actual method? So I think we need to start there. Um, and figure that out if we can. Trying to nail down the length of terms for town councilors and whether those terms should be staggered has been a point of debate that has resurfaced for the Charter Commission. So I would just, I would just uh, uh, try to, my question is, is what does a staggered term accomplish in terms of governance? What is the, okay, that's, that's what you're saying, is continuity. Um, but I, I think in this form of government, the continuity rests with the executive in that they have the authority to run the day-to-day -day operations of the municipality. And they're on long-term contracts and they're appointed? That's the form of government. So that's okay. I don't deny that. Okay. But, but we're going to have a council. Let's get the council up and running. Whether they... Who cares how many terms they have, so long as they don't serve over 12 years and whenever they catch up to being in sync, so be it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that in sync business either because we've done that several times where people have had two, some people have had two, some people have had four, and to be honest, it didn't seem to make any difference in terms of how somebody was regarded as to whether they had a two-year term or a four-year four term. term. Or, you know, and I think that would be the issue. Uh, can, can I, can I, so I just like to read this one paragraph that Steve wrote um, on this very subject. It just says here, and this is for the benefit of transparency and, and for the viewing, uh, voting, tax paying public. It says here, third, we submit that staggered terms dilute the voters an opportunity to express their view on the efficacy of their local government as a whole at a single point in time. No Massachusetts city governments 
past staggered terms for their legislative body members. I'm going to say that once more. No Massachusetts city government have staggered terms for their legislative body members. This concept is a throwback to the plural executive system that characterized the three-person board of selectmen where one selectman seat came up for election each year. In actual practice in Massachusetts cities, there is not a pattern of high, vote, high turnover on municipal councils. The continuity of government in the Barnstable form of government is carried out by its town manager. Therefore, we recommend concurrent terms for all councillors of either four or two years. In addition, because of staggered, an incumbent district or at-large council could run for another office in his or her off year. The charter cannot take that right away from them. The vote was six to one in favor of four-year terms for all councillors with all councillors elected at the same time. The next question for the Charter Commission was whether the council president should be the person who gets the most votes in the town council election. There's got to be a mechanism by which this person can step down out of that particular office. And so, again, the individual running for office is identifiable, you know exactly who's going to be the council president as opposed to, you know, six people running with the top vote getting being the elevated position. You, 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 count, you count out mm -hmm. separate duties for one elected office on the council. Just mm -hmm. one. You, you count out, you carved out separate duties for one office on the, on the, on the council. Right. But you haven't given the voters a chance to vote on who they want that person to be. You know, I was one of the five that, that went for the highest vote getter, and, and they've heard a lot since, and they've thought about it, kind of a thing. And if we're trying to get people interested in elections, I think this is another step in going to that direction, is to get the people willing to come out. If there's going to be an election, people um, campaigning for, for that position, I think it's going to do more good than, than electing it at the highest vote getter. Roy? Well, <clears throat> I wasn't clear what Greg was saying, what he heard the people saying, but regardless of that, I, I'm very much opposed to having the council president elected at large. I don't think it's a good move for the council, and I think the members who have been elected to the council are better able to elect the chairperson. And uh, just because somebody runs for council president does not mean you're capable of being the council president. It could mean a lot of other things, and it could mean exactly the opposite. And, uh, and I also think in terms of if you, if you get a person in that position that can't function in that job, then if you have you know, the, the election every year, you get a chance to revisit it. And I think it means for a stronger council and better town government. You know, Roy, you talked about the tax collector and the and the, the people who've done a great job. The voters in town do a great job of selecting people. And I want to give the, the people the, the right to be able to select this person, to put them into this, <coughs> this office. And if it doesn't work, then it's the voters that have the job of throwing them out again. And so... After four years. Yeah, well, I mean, say the, yes, after four years. So the, the, yeah, that makes sense. sense. Well, that's your opinion. The Charter Commission, on a vote of four to three, decided that the Town Council President will be a separate, distinct office. And just a reminder that you can watch the Charter Commission meetings on demand at the Town's website, town.barnstable.ma.us. Meanwhile, there are no meetings on the Town calendar this evening. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here on Monday. I'm Mark Mumford.